Hi everybody, how's it going? I'm Pabs, the Rising VTuber and an artist, and today I have finally returned. Now, I had, I was really tied up at work for like an entire week, and uh, I had some other stuff to take care of besides, but now I am back in action, 100% ready to rock, and most importantly, thank you both, Andrew, Tanker Truck, most importantly, uh, it's going to be the first time I am doing a hand cam stream. Now, I don't know what exactly can go wrong in a hand cam stream. <laughs> But I don't imagine it's gonna to be too too wild. However, I did prepare something special for the occasion. So, uh, you see, the thing is, when you are made of mochi like myself, it becomes a little bit difficult to work with paper in the summer heat. So, uh, I asked the sun to do me a solid and... Hang on. <laughs> this should have been for dramatic effect. There we go. Yeah, I asked him to. I asked the son to briefly turn me into human form so I could uh, have access to all my hands and digits and all that good stuff. So here I am. Now, uh, I came here to do some origami, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is a seventy sheet pack of origami paper from the dollar store nearby. Uh, it's got some instructions here for how to do a bird and a pinwheel, but uh, I like to do cranes. I'm, I'm a big crane guy, you see. I've been doing cranes for a while. I learned how to do them back in high school, I think? That was a really violent way to turn, tear off the wrapper. <laughs> but yeah, I've been doing cranes for like a long time, so I'm very familiar with how to make them. So I think we can start with a couple of those to warm up with. Ooh, there's like all different sizes and colors. I like that. Okay, so... Uh, red seems like a good color to start with. Why not? Uh, let's turn on the music, shall we? Alright, so I, I don't actually have any... Um, I know that um, some people like to use their fingernails. Some people like to use like specialized tools for folding origami. I like to use whatever object I've got handy that's got a flat edge. So I've got here like... Uh, one of these, how would you describe it? Like a plug-in? A plug? One of those things that you use to convert a USB cable to to your wall. That's not conversion, that is just plugging it in. But, but for our purposes, it should work just fine. Let's see here. I don't think I've made like... <laughs> is it weird that I'm nervous? <laughs> Yeah, you can see here that now we've got a nice flat bit of paper. That's why I like to use something with like a flat edge. Some, a knife can work, but sometimes if the paper's too thin, it'll rip. So you have to be careful with that. Yeah. I used to just do them by hand with like my fingers. You can, you can kind of like pinch your hands like this and like really tighten your nails together. And that will essentially produce a flat edge. Nails are very handy because even though they're they they kind of like have that solid edge to them, uh, they do bend a little. So essentially, if you push them down hard enough, they kind of flatten against the table. That's fun to do. Okay. But yeah, I'm very excited to be back. I've been uh, yeah. It felt like I, th I I don't know what it is. I think I am cut out for long term streaming. I don't know what it is, but I just felt like it was much harder to smile when I wasn't doing this. Yeah, I uh, learned about this thing called like uh, D DFA or something like that. I think it's some kind of fatigue, right? So essentially, it's like if you stay focused on something for too long, you actually get mental fatigue, which makes sense. I mean, I I know a lot of people have been there. But apparently the best way to kind of release the kind of... Okay, so I think like it's got something to do with like a chemical that's an inhibitor. Not 100% sure. But <clears throat> from what I understand, sleeping is one way to re return those inhibitors. But apparently one of the most efficient ways to replenish them is actually to take a walk in nature. You see, apparently like when you're super focused on something, you kind of tend to shut out all outside interference. So what happens when you kind of go to nature is that you actually have a bunch of very weak but very much present stimuli, stuff that kind of grounds you. You know, like you hear a bird chirp, you, you feel the like ground underneath you kind of bent underneath your step. It's all that kind of good stuff. So it actually produces like a much better, it's, it's a much kind of healthier, more limited kind of distraction that you can make for yourself. 
So yeah, uh, that that dude on Twitter who who I lost an argument to was right. I, I you do need to let, touch grass sometime. That's a joke, by the way. I don't argue stuff on Twitter. Nobody has time for that shit. Just block them. One sad cat. Thank you for the follow. How are you? Why do you look like you belong in the Archer cartoon? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I mean, it's it's got kind of like a more realistic style. I, so I, I didn't expect that one. Maybe it's like a line work or something. Also, hey, Leo, how you doing? How have you been? It's been a minute since we talked. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, out here working the origami. Pressing it down with a... Power adapter! Huh, that's what they're called, power adapters. Uh, oh wow, that was some nice zoom in. There we go. Uh, what are you making? Cranes, yeah. Cranes to start off with. I don't... They're the only ones that I know how to do from perfect memory. <laughs> I don't think I even know how to do, like, a boat. Oh, gross, your expressive hands? <laughs> What's wrong with my hands, huh? What do you mean, my gross expressive hands? What do you- Do you not like this? Do you not like this? I- I can't actually do that thing. I remember I saw one of the Hall Life girls, uh, uh, Muna, do that for, when she did her hand cam stream. It's like this weird wiggly thing that she did. I can't really do that. I can do some fun hand shapes, but, like, that's about the limit of my <laughs> neat hand tricks. Oh yeah, there's like this thing, right? <laughs> I always got amazed when I saw people do that in real life. Like I was, I don't, I don't, like not to diminish any compliments I've ever given, but I am very easily impressed. <laughs> I'm going to puke, <laughs> man. Why you gotta step on my stream and be all combative? It's been a, it's been a while since we talked. <laughs> all right. Okay, and then just gonna fold that down. Yeah, I'm. I am by no means a master at making origami crane. Oh, but I've been laying around. I've tried. I've tried out Left for Dead two last night. Oh, I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, one of the one of the classic Valve games. Yeah, I've I've, I've never thought about checking out the Left for Dead series because I wasn't super into zombie games. I say this as somebody who's currently streaming Resident Evil 4, but that's different, all right? I have, I have personal beef with that game. But yeah, I've heard good stuff about it. I remember one time... <laughs> I remember I saw, like, a bunch of the, uh, kind of, like, scribbles that you can find on the walls. Like, uh, they'll leave graffiti in the walls for in the game. Other survivors as well. And one of them was like, no zombie is safe from Chicago, Ted. Also, first screen. Yay. I got interested because of the server I'm in plays it. Nice. Yeah, there we go. First crane. Look at that handsome lad. Uh, there we go. That, that should be a little bit more easy to see. Yeah, some... <laughs> I'm not sure how much my phone can handle in terms of like hand cam, because um, <laughs> my 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 poor little boy is like six years old. By that I mean my phone is around six years old, and uh, I haven't exactly been kind to it, so I don't know if it's gonna have like overheating problems. He did that fast. Yeah, no, cranes are fun. I, it's fun for me to make a bird. All right, so now we can do two things. We can either. I swear to god I had the instruction manual for this sucker right around here. Where did it go? Ah, back here. Yeah, so we can either make a pinwheel or another type of bird, which is like a flat bird. I'm kind of interested in the flat bird. Let's try that out. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Alright, so one, place paper color side down. Color side down? <laughs> Crease diagonally and unfold each side to me to crease. Your form should look like the illustration. Fold, flap, up, back. Man, ain't nothing more dog shit than instructions on how to make origami. <laughs> like, you need to watch a video. Like, I feel like origami is one of those things where you absolutely need to watch a video. Or else you're just not going to get how to do it. <coughs> because, look at this. <laughs> look at this. What part of this... 
It's like natural. I feel like we skipped a couple steps. You see that shit? Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, now wait. Are we... Okay, so color side down. Oh, wait, I think I got it. Okay, I, I think I understand. So let's kind of make a crease in down the middle first. Because I think that's going to help guide stuff. There we go. And then we can just kind of fold that out and then fold that back in. There we go. Okay, I am pretty sure that this is what they want us to do. <laughs> I am like 90 to 80% sure this is what they want us to do. All right, then... Fold right and left top corners to meet in the center. Crease and unfold. Okay, wait, what? Oh, wait, I get it. Okay, so they, okay, then they want us to fold this in like this, I think. Well, I mean, the fastest way to find, have you ever made a snail? No, I have not. If you've got like a link for that, uh, DM it to me and I'll try to check it out. I know, um, Toast also sent me a link for how to do a rose. So I'm also interested in doing that. Okay, so then like this. Yeah. One of the ones that I could never figure out how to do were those like star things that you make from like a, a strip of paper. Yeah, I've never managed to figure out how to do those. Actually, a crane is the only one that I have kind of figured out permanent, like... Alright, now what is this? Okay, so number three, hold paper at point D. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this looks like a... <laughs> this looks like something that Sun Tzu would make. Hang on, where... Like, th this looks like they're teaching me how to like... They're teach they're telling me to go in for the from the flank for an ambush maneuver. <laughs> okay, let's figure this thing out. Okay, so hold it at point D. Um, pull top flap of paper open from point A. Okay, and flatten it inward along the center crease to connect points B and C. Uh, what? Okay, so I'm, I'm with you so far. Okay, I'm up to around point A. Flatten it inward along the center. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay, so they want us, they want us to fold it inward like this. So, am I reading that right? Yeah, that's probably, that seems about right. Man. Like I said, it doesn't get much more suck ass and <laughs> somehow the wor <laughs> the worst instructions I have ever read are always for origami and they are always for like I feel like almost a more advanced tutorial is better for <laughs> origami stuff. Because if if you try to put it in like the most simplistic robotic terms, it almost becomes more confusing. Okay. Fold entire- okay, wait, no, there's more to this, okay. <coughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. And press flat flat, creating a new crease between C and D. Uh, okay, and that- okay, so from C and D. Let me drink some water. I'm gonna leave Lurk. Alright, have fun. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so now we want, gotta make one from between C and D. Is this about right? This is such a confusing project. All right, I'll have faith though. Repeat step three on the other side. What the hell? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I'm definitely... 
Oh, before I leave, we have the same mole on the same hand. Oh, do we? Oh, somewhere around here? I have like... Sometimes I can't tell which which parts of my hand are moles and which parts are just like me leaving an ink stain from my pen. <laughs> but yeah, that that's cool though. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely think I'm overthinking this. All right, let's try, let's let's go back a couple steps. Okay. Hmm. On the other hand, <laughs> I could just make another crane. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I don't know what what this is supposed to be. All right. All right. Do it. Do it over. Do it over. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. And then it wants us to... Okay, let me see if I can get this right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not quite. Okay, I don't think that's quite right. Maybe like wants us to turn it over. No, that can't be right either. like did it like this yeah no I don't think this is gonna work out <laughs> all right let's just make it let's let's um return this poor paper to let's turn this poor paper into a crane before I abuse it anymore <laughs> the poor thing yeah this is gonna be like a chill little stream I'm not, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna mold over origami all right I promise I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start molding over origami that that'll be a new low for me I think I've gotten mad at plenty of inanimate objects before in my life but I I don't I think origami would have to be a first <laughs> yeah it'll turn from an origami stream into a confetti making stream <laughs> hmm I remember on Mythbusters, they once, you know, like they said, like the maximum amount of times you can fold a piece of paper is like 18 times. Something like that. Oh, I think Leo just sent me the... You look like this dog. <laughs> okay, hang on, let me, uh... <laughs> let me put this on screen. Oh, it vanished. I guess, it's a, I guess OBS doesn't like... Dot .bmp images, huh? Well, that's fine. Oh, I can manage. Let's see. Yes! <laughs> I feel like I should start like collecting some boomer ass memes and then just putting them up on my on my screen like this. Like uh, one of these days I'm just gonna have a, like a full on minion meme just kind of like hanging out in the corner over there. <laughs> That's such a cute dog. <laughs> so full of life. All right. Anyway, uh, right. Cranes. Back on the crane game. Cr back on the crane grind set. What is wrong with this paper? <laughs> oh god. It it's like it's like you know when you're like. Did I forget how to do this? No, no, I, rem I I think this bird fucked me up so bad that I forgot how to make a crane. <laughs> oh my god, what? Okay, no, no, no. I, I know how to make a crane, okay? I know how to make a crane. Um, okay, so it'd be... 
Jesus, this is so... <laughs> this paper is so busted now. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to think here. I think it was like... Uh... Oh my god, did I forget? Did I actually forget how to make a crane? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm allowed to memorize one set of origami instructions. No more! No more! Than one origami instruction set at a time, and I replace it with that fucking bird. <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> I gotta look this up before I lose my mind. Right, okay. Uh, uh, oh, wait, no, now I remember. Right, 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 it went like this. Oh my god, that really scared me. <laughs> that really, really scared me. <laughs> I've been... I'm not gonna lie, folks, I'm a little pooped. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't exactly get a break this weekend for... Um, for, for some... Uh, for, from, for some extracurricular reasons. But needless to say, I haven't had much of a chance to rest at all. Hopefully that'll change by the end of the week, but... Uh, <laughs> My word, it's going to be a rough couple days before then. Well, I'm, I shouldn't mind it too much. Everybody gets tired every now and again, right? What's important is to not push it too, too much, I don't think. How does that go? Like, eat when you're hungry, rest when you're tired? Only flaw with that philosophy it doesn't say what, is that it doesn't say when you should work. You know, eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, work when you got nothing else going on. I guess if you're not hungry or tired, that just means you can do you can mess around and do whatever you want. There we go. I still can't believe that that friggin' bird pooped, crapped out my brain so hard that I forgot how to do an origami, how to do a crane. Now I'm worried about like trying other tutorials. So, like, what'll happen if I try another kind of like origami origami tutorial and I suddenly forget how to do a crane again, and this time it doesn't come back? <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> I like to think that like <laughs> in that brief moment, like my brain temporarily went like no more storage space forget one thing to create more room for paper craft and it just went like all right then we don't need the origami if you're trying to make this bird right now and the brain was like i have no problem with that and then i forgot how to make an origami i keep calling it an origami it's a crane origami is like the art i guess mm -hmm. uh <laughs> jeez honestly Oh well, at, le at least now I remember though. You know, that's that's always a good thing. Okay, there we go. Let's coax it out a little bit. I think what we can do is maybe like go down a conga line of, of cranes of crane paper sizes. I think that'll look kind of cool. Oops, I feel like I tore something. It looks fine. Oh yeah, there we go. Second of crane. Now we got a buddy. Wait, no. The yellow one's slightly bigger. No. Let's compare wingspan. Yeah, no, they're the same size. I was gonna say, like, the yellow one looks bigger somehow, but it's just, like, the size of the heads, I think. Alright, so, we've done, like, the biggest papers, I think. Let's try to go for a slightly smaller size now. Uh, oops. Well, I'm sure that's fine. Uh, 
Okay, so what about... Pink! That seems like a good color. Is it just me or like this blue paper look like slightly sturdier than all other paper? Maybe that's like my personal bias because I remember I had some blue paper around the house when I was a kid. That was just like the toughest paper on the block. <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't carbon paper, that's for sure. Like, I, I would have remembered if it was carbon paper, but it was just like blue board paper, and it was just like the toughest stuff ever. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned it before that you can use a knife for this kind of flattening thing as well. Um, I think that's kind of against the chill vibes of the stream. Rice paper. Hey, Corky, how you doing? How's your week been? I know it's only Monday, but uh, question still stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Briefly, I briefly changed it to my human form because, as it turns out, mochi is, uh, mo paper cuts when you're made out of mochi actually hurt more than when you're made out of uh, meat. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't know what the science is behind that. Maybe it's like has something to do with the nervous system. Let's see. Yeah, cool your heels, enjoy the stream. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. I made too many folds, didn't I? <laughs> Oops. Doing okay. First day at work went well, everyone's very nice, and my mom took me out for dinner. Damn, I thought rice had no nerve endings. Today I learned. <clears throat> yeah, no. I mean, of course I have nerve, nerve endings. I have one hell of a spine. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily true. I feel like I have a spine when it comes to some things, but not others. In any case... Yeah, I know. Also, apparently, like, just working paper with mochi hands is just hell on the paper, you know? Let's see... Everything gets coated in, like, that mochi dust. It's not great. I've I, I've I've proofed my drawing tablet and stuff against it, so that's not really a problem. But otherwise, it's just fair game. What is it you're making now? More cranes. I've already made two. I've, I'm kind of going a uh, sort of descending order. These two are the same size, but I'm gonna make one smaller each time. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a one-trick pony since I only know how to make cranes, but uh. <laughs> I, I try to learn how to do <laughs> this this bird that's on the back of the origami sheets and I literally forgot how to do a crane <laughs> the next moment like I went for I gave up on the on that bird there and the time and the moment I went back to making cranes I was like wait what was I doing how did I do this <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'd rather just be able to make make cranes forever than not really able to be able to make a bird. So I think it's a fair trade-off. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. I used to do this all the time back when I was in university and high school. Like, that, that was back when, like, stuff was really paper-centric. Uh, I know it still is to some extent, I imagine. But I I know that a lot of stuff has gone like w much more online. This is not a good sign. Hang on, oh, I can fix it later. No use worrying about it too much. Anyway, um, back when I still had like a ton of assignments that were all on paper and everything, whenever the kind of the end of the year came, uh, whenever I, there was an assignment that I really didn't care about or that I just didn't want to like immediately trash, I would just turn it into a little origami crane. I remember my first year of university, I was basically doing that for all of like my all of the classes that I took for additional credit. And I ended up like with this garbage bag full of paper origami that I just kind of toted around until around my second year, I think. That's when I disposed of the of them. I don't know if that'll curse me or something. I think you're supposed to fold a thousand overall, so I'm at least about a hundred in the hole. Paper crane time. When I was in elementary or middle school, I was obsessed with making tiny paper airplanes out of colorful post-it notes. It did it so much I got in trouble. Aww. <laughs> That's cute, though. Also, hey, Toast. How you doing? Yeah, it's paper crane time. There we go. Let's see. 
Okay, yeah, this one's definitely a little smaller. You can tell from the wingspan. <laughs> yeah, man, how long has it been since I last made a paper airplane? It's been a while. <laughs> I wasn't too, too good at making them as a kid, but uh, I, I, was, I was obsessed with them for a brief time. Like, I wasn't good at making them, but I was, like, obsessed with them, if that makes sense. Like, I really wanted to be good at making air, air paper airplanes. Just woke up. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. You know, I'm, I'm making cranes. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, lined it up just right. There we go. I love it when it's so flat. I probably couldn't do it well anymore. I've not done crap. I understand you love the concept. That's, yeah, you've got the right of it. I probably couldn't do it well anymore. I've not done crafty paper creations in years. Hmm. Yeah, when, I, I think I told Toast about this. When I was a kid, I wanted to do paper craft so bad, but I was like not very good at it. Um, I was a very excitable child. Are you using your charger to flatten it? Yes, I am. It's got a very flat bottom. So, you know, works out. Yeah, I wanted to learn how to do like those super complex paper craft things. Uh, it didn't really work out. I was a very excitable kid and I've got like... Yeah, unriced tabs. Correct. I have been... <laughs> I have been given flesh. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird having a circulatory system. I'm a big fan of it, honestly. You know, you, you got you got the old heart thing going like ba-dump, 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 ba-dump constantly without stopping. It was so exciting. I listened to it all night and didn't go to bed. Having a neck, I'm more ambivalent about. I don't know how to feel about having a neck. <laughs> but you know, you, you, you take the good with the bad. Yeah, I wonder if I could do paper craft now. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I could probably follow the instructions a little bit better, though. Yeah, my... my <laughs> yeah, my, uh, like, what, seven, eight-year-old self looked at like this this website that told you how to make like a fairy in a bottle from Zelda and I was like, I bet I could do that. Could always try it. That's true. Yeah. I mean I know the library has free print free printing, so I could I could just very well go out there with the file loaded on a USB and just print it out. That might be fun for like a weekend thing. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Man, I, I also used to make these from post-it notes, which which were which resulted in these very adorable tiny cranes, but what's going on here? It's like a crease. You guys see that? It's like It's like a very noticeable crease. I must have squished it at some point. Poor thing. Let's see. Yeah. You can also flatten it with like your nails. I, I do that sometimes. I just find that the the charger doing it with a charger. I'm sorry. What's this thing called? Power adapter. <laughs> it still gives me a kick that this thing has like an actual name. I always just call it like a charger box or something. Oop. Hang on. This this adorable dog in the top left of the screen. Top. Is that top left? No, that's top. I mean, it's my left. You're right. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how else to put it. Okay, then. Oh wait, right. I need to fold these in as well. But yeah, stuff has been interesting. Today I got to see like a huge, the biggest charcuterie board set that I've ever seen in my entire life. It had everything. It had smoked cheddar. It had grapes. It had blackberries. It had raspberries. It had every. It had like a ton of different stuff on it. Uh, I nibbled some of the uh, smoked cheddar. I know one of my coworkers was really hyping it up. Like, <laughs> it's actually really funny how much of an agenda this dude had for smoked cheddar. He was like, "All right, man, listen. Oh uh, man, they don't have like smoked cheddar. What the fuck?" And like. <laughs> He just kept mentioning smoked cheddar, and then he finally found it, and he was like, fuck yes! That sounds so good. Yeah, a lot of stuff on there was really tasty. <clears throat> I didn't get to try everything because I uh, ended up getting pretty full up. But you know, at least it filled up the tank before I started stream. 
Okay. Oh, did the hand cam thing freeze? What's wrong? What's the matter with you, man? Temperature. iPhone needs to cool down before you can use it. Oh shit! <laughs> All right. Uh. Uh. Well, I guess that's the end of the hand cam stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Damn. Oh shit. That's hot. Ow. Ah, Jesus, it's like hot. It's like touching a microwave. The rice cooked the phone. Ah, my petard. I've been I've been hung by it. Well, shit. Now what do I do? I guess I could go back to my rice farm. You know, it, it's fun to it's fun to have like a you know eyes for one thing. I know you can't see them, but I got eyes in this form. Um, <laughs> it's it's been fun having eyes, but I think we get, for the sake of my. Uh, you know, for the sake of my already dying phone, <laughs> we should probably just like uh, switch to something else for the moment. Oh wait, no, don't take out the way the dog. You could doodle. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> I really should have thought about that a little harder, though. I I know that um. Geez, so I gotta be more careful with that sort of thing. Yeah. I could invest in a. I could have, like, switch out my webcam for it instead of using my phone, but uh, I, I didn't quite figure that out just yet. <laughs> yeah, the phone said, this stream is over. <laughs> yeah, the phone had enough. The phone's like, oh, so you think you're going to be funny by doing some weird, wacky, wacky stuff with your hands? Well, I'm about to be hilarious. <laughs> All right, hang on. I got I to gotta go shrink down to five foot, to four foot five. Bam! There we go. Uh, it feels good to no longer have a neck. I'm not gonna lie, having a neck feels weird. <laughs> At least you got a, first, a few done first. That's true. All right, hang on. I gotta sw switch stuff on the on the Twitch. One day you'll figure out the webcam, and then you'll be unstoppable. Disappear my eyes. I mean, it's not like you could see them before, but. <laughs> Yeah, I've got Schrodinger's eyes. Yeah, beneath, beneath like the, <laughs> yeah, beneath all that, on all, all that hair, I have the prettiest eyes you've ever seen. It, it, they look like, they look like two. They look like, <laughs> they look like a pair of raisins swimming on top of ping pong balls. I don't think that's all that flattering, actually. I was trying to remember that one that one thing that somebody said about like Kermit's eyes. I think it was like a, a pair of ping ping pong balls floating in a sea of moss. <laughs> All right, let's see. And remove the origami tag. <laughs> there we go. Stream title updated. All right. Let me open up CSP then. Let's see. Uh, 4,000 by 4,000 should be fine. Where is my stupid little art glove? I'm telling you, that thing that thing always shows up except for when I need it. It's like Where is it? Maybe I dropped it somewhere. I could just do without. It's not like it'll be the end of the world if I don't use my weird little half glove. I I always feel very fashionable when I wear that thing. Alright, hang on, let me open up CSP. Yeah, it does disappear. <laughs> Okay, let me uh, also get rid of the ninja hand cam. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna shrink this guy down a little bit more. Hmm. I'm trying to think what would be a good thing to, to doodle because I'm not super good at, at doodling. Oh, I've got an idea. 
I was I was gonna save this for another for a rainy day, but I might as well try and execute on it now. All right, let me see if I can't open up a web browser page. So, the concept of this idea, let me kind of put it on screen here, is that I go on wikipedia.com, wikipedia.org, I'm sorry to say, the free encyclopedia that any, anyone can edit. And the idea is that I kind of click, hang on, let me open up the web browser. Get back in here. So the idea behind this I, this concept is, I was just, so when I was a kid, I used to read Wikipedia articles for fun. I loved like just the, the sport of it. So what I would do is that I would click on this random article page. So I think here's what we do. So step one, we click on random article. Kaushal Archie is an Indian first-class cricketer who played for Tripura. Oh, that's interesting. Broly Halt Railway. <laughs> Alright, so the idea is that for the first three animals we get, one will be the head, one will be the body, and one will be like the legs or the tail or whatever. It's kind of playing Magnificent Corpse, but with Wikipedia at the helm. Yeah. I've always thought that was like a really funny name for a game. Magnificent Corpse. I don't know if you guys have ever played that game. Uh, 1925 Portuguese pres presidential election. There are some specific ass sites on this on this on this encyclopedia of everything. John Henrik von Hilcher. <laughs> oh shoot! I've just been laying here, but I have to go feed the cats. I'll be right back. Let's come back soon. I've never heard of that one actually. Oh, actually, you know, while we're here. <laughs> Yeah, Magnificent Corpses. What the f- Well, that can't be right. Anyway, the idea of the game is to essentially ha have like three people uh, all kind of draw at the same time. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense though for the title of the book, Mag Magnificent Corpses. I don't know if there's a more appropriate title for like a book about relics. Um, but essentially the, problem, the idea of the Magnificent Corpse is that you have like a notepad between three people uh, and you pass it around. So somebody draws a head, somebody draws, draws a body and somebody draws the uh, legs. And the idea is that they all draw some kind of like weird different creature. So by the end of it, when you reveal the full beast, it looks like they're all kind of me messed up and weird. Come on, animal. Come on, animal. Come on, animal. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Please, there are so many animals. Yes! All right, we got one. Valenzuela is a genius of Socoptera in the family. I can't pronounce that shit. The lizard bark lice. Some species are extinct and date the Eocene period or the Eocene of Poland or Russia. I can't read this shit. Yeah, there's got to be an online encyclopedia just for creatures. All right. Uh, careful of your squeamish about bugs. Hang on. All right, so we got the head. It is going to be a little bug head. Fantastic. List, list of listed buildings in Bissaray and Harry Orkney. <laughs> what? Boardhouse, Threshing Mill, and Settings Boardhouse. God, I love Wikipedia. <laughs> KF Flamortari. A professional football club based in Prisina, Kosovo. The Football Super League of Kosovo? I, I must hear more. <laughs> okay, so they have like a... The Republic of Kosovo. It's a partially recognized state in Southeastern Europe. Huh, how about that? Alright. Mary Bayou. Belgium military school. I didn't know Belgium had a military. Walnut ink. An ink made from the green husks surrounding the nut of the walnut. Ah yes, I learned about Kosovo in my geopolitics class in college. It gets controversial. Makes sense. I didn't know you could make ink from walnuts. 
All right, come on, creature. Come on, creature. Yeah. Wait, no, that's a plant. Man, I saw I saw italicized text in like a scientific name, and I got so excited. This is a cactus. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's a false peyote. <laughs> well, that seems a bit rude. It looks pretty peyote to me. <laughs> it's okay, babe. We all get imposter syndrome. <laughs> all right. Come on. Hang on. This is shaped like a peener. All right, next. <laughs> okay, Staphylococcus psilosis, a species, a species, wait, is that a staph bacteria? A gram-positive bacterium that forms clusters of cells. Okay, we got a bacteria, I guess, for the, for the body. <laughs> All right. Um, that's gonna be challenging and interesting. <laughs> I don't- wait. It can be used in salami fermentation? <laughs> what? Alright, hang on, I gotta learn more about this. Oh, okay, so it's got like a little mold on the outside. Oh. Give it a salami body. Not a bad idea, actually. A cured sausage consisting of fermented and air-dried meat. Put a little salami on that bad boy. <laughs> this is... I don't know why this dude is so funny to me. I think it's something about, like, the murderously excited expression and the fact that he's just, like, pointing at it. <laughs> it's like that one soy jack picture. <laughs> Her salami. All right, enough ma enough messing around with a salami. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, creature, 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 creature. Wolf Colin. Wait, no, that's a dude. Mono Price, an American online retailer that sells generic branded consumer electronics under its namesake private label, as well as a name as well as name brands, consumer electronics, and outdoor equipment. Huh. I've never heard of these guys. Uh, okay, that's a flower. Getting warmer. Come on, I know, I know you can. I know you got it in your Wikipedia. Come on. Cold and Bouncy is the fourth studio album by Anglo-Irish avant pop band The High Llamas. <laughs> I'm sorry, The High Llamas? <laughs> Gotta say, that's a pretty good name for a band. Donald Arthur German. That is one hell of a fucking power stance. I gotta say, like, that, <laughs> that dude is zooming. <laughs> that is a man on a mission right there. <laughs> Look at that guy. Middle distance runner. He completed the 15,000 meter final at the 1948 Olympics. I forget, is the 1948 one the, the one where they had, like, a marathon and it was completely fucked because, like, nobody had water or anything? Phoenix Foundation, speed sailing. Come on, give me something juicy. <laughs> you running? He's running so hard, you know he's clenched up. You can see his ribs. What? Yeah, no, like uh, the nineteen. It was like one of the early nineteen hundreds ones. Like, hang on, nineteen twenty Olympic marathon. Nineteen twenty eight Summer Olympics. This might be it. No, wait. No, this is from Amsterdam. Uh, oh, I think this might have be, been it. I will be honest, Fast, this is so entertaining to just watch like, I feel like Wikipedia deep dives could just be a category of stream. Right? 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 Right?
Rat Poison... No, wait, it's called, like, Strychnine. Marathon. Oh, here we go, it's the 1904 Summer Olympics. Now, you might be asking, well, Pabs, if it's a Summer Olympics, how come they factored rat, the Rat Poison Strychnine into it? <laughs> uh... The race was run during the hottest part of the day on dusty country roads, with minimal water supply. While 32 athletes representing four nations completed, only 14 managed to complete the race, which was a bizarre affair due to the poor organization and officiating. While Fred Lors was greeted as the apparent winner, he was later disqualified as he had hitched a ride in a car for part of the race. The actual winner, Thomas Hicks, was near collapse and hallucinating by the end of the race. A side effect of being administered brandy, raw eggs, and strychnine, a rat poison, by his trainers. The fourth place finisher, Andarin Caraval, took a nap during the race after eating spoiled apples. So yeah, how about that, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, it's Corgi, don't even worry about it, alright? <laughs> Thomas Hicks and supporters. This is the dude they were feeding rat poison to like it was going out of style. <laughs> he had to be carried out of the way. <laughs> oh yeah, no, the Olympics have always been a shit show. Like, particularly recently, not in terms of organization, but also just in terms of, like, seating. Like, actually getting a ticket seal to the Olympics since, since, like, the 1980s has been an absolute nightmare because actually until very recently, there was a, what do you call, kind of like almost like a monopoly on like a ticker sell, ticket seller. Like there was this one organization that just like bought all the tickets that and again, just like sold them with hotel packages at a, like a huge price. It really sucked. Wait, what's this? A Lincoln Handicap? A flat handicap horse race? <laughs> H type of horse is four or older. It has run over a distance of one mile. Huh. Rogue bear. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, no, hang on. What? What is this? <laughs> These look like supervillain costumes. <laughs> okay, this one kind of fucks though. Very wise. Rio Riva just straight up looks like a clown outfit. What is what is going on here? What is this? An event called the Lincolnshire Handicap was established. Okay, first of all, okay, flat, flat racing. Flat racing is the most common form of horse racing seen worldwide. Flat racing tracks are typically oval in shape and are generally level. Okay, so it's run on a flat course. Handicap? A, a race in which horses carry different weights allocated by the handicapper. A better horse will carry a heavier weight to give it a disadvantage when racing against slower horses. Huh. Okay, and what's a... Okay, I know what a horse race is, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know what a horse race is. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, they're not... They're just not gonna... Okay, I think, like... What? Alright, so maybe, like... No, they're not going to say where these came from. It's extremely self-explanatory. Yeah, I feel like you don't get much simpler than calling it a horse race. I don't think it gets more complicated than that. Keto? <laughs> Wait, hold up, hold up. Keto was in this thing? Or is that just the name of the racer? It might just be the name of the racer, actually. I don't think... Hey, it's Pablo! <laughs> what else is there in here? Capable guest, Blythe Knight. Some of these sound like they'd be very good, like, titles for RPG characters. Penitent, Prime Exhibit, Mole of Killa, <laughs> Expresso Star. I like that one. All right, we'll come back to this. I'm, I'm actually kind of interested in this. Horse racing always has, like, the best names, honestly. In terms of, in terms of like, everything. That being said, we still haven't found an animal. I know we... I know we've, um, managed to, uh, chance upon horse racing. Hey, look, an owl. Graduate college Lancaster. 
The largest college at Lancaster University and only postgraduate college. Huh. How about that? I feel like I'm flipping through channels on a television set. Come on, beast. Come on, creature. Yes, butterfly! <laughs> Wait, hang on. Wait, if I got a bug head and I just give it a butterfly body... Hmm. You know what? Maybe I could- maybe I could change it up, actually. You know? Maybe... Okay, I've got a couple of ideas for how I can handle this, but I'll, I'll figure it out as we go. Alright, so we have three things now. Uh... <laughs> I feel like this has gone completely off the rails just by virtue of the fact that I could not for- Okay, that is a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Anyway, I feel like this has gone wildly off the rails just by virtue of the fact that I cannot fucking get animal pages on Wikipedia. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense that they're more difficult to find, you know? I feel like that makes sense that they're more difficult to find because, you know, there's only so many mammals or animals on Earth. Um, the mark of a good streamer is their ability to improvise. <laughs> oh, that I must be excellent. I've been improvising since day one. <laughs> I mean, no, I planned my my uh, debut stream. Everything else has just been kind of by the seat of my pants, though. <laughs> but hey, look how far I've gotten. Okay, so in order to make this work, we need three things. One, we need to make the bug head. So I am going to make it like a very kind of simple looking like bug head like this. We've got like the very long kind of antenna like that. Okay, so we have this bacteria slash the salami <clears throat> as part of the body. So what I'm thinking is we can have like I kind of like vaguely salami shape middle. But we have like a flagellum. Kind of like somewhere around back here. Okay, and we can have like a little bit of like mold and everything around here. But kind of like the way that we're going to bring the butterfly into this is actually on the legs. We are going to kind of go... We're going to kind of crib off of what Final Fantasy VII did and just have like a bunch of butterfly wings as the legs. No, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. So originally I wanted them to kind of like go in like a spiral pattern like this almost. But I don't know how good that would translate. So maybe we can do... God, this thing is actually kind of horrifying. <laughs> I mean, granted, I did just, just make a mutant perversion of three of perfectly go of God's perfectly good creatures, so... <laughs> you know, I feel like that one might be on me. <laughs> oh well, you take- you take- you reap what you sow, I suppose. Bugs are some of God's most horrifying creatures to begin with, to be, to be fair. I mean, that's not, that's, that's not, that's fair. That's fair. You know what? I'm gonna, I'll, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Hmm. Okay. So how- okay, so maybe I can look up like some- what, what some bacteria look like as well. So... Because a virus has like a very distinct shape, but I don't know about bacterium. They're just kind of Cheeto-shaped, generally. <laughs> they just look like Cheetos. <laughs> it's not their fault, they're, they're just kind of simple organisms. I mean, they got like... hairs. They got like a little hair stuff. Maybe we can kind of like build on the idea that it's like made of mold and we can just have it like kind of like rotting down here. 
I feel like I've accidentally made a hor uh, Silent Hill creature. <laughs> we gotta make it cuter somehow, so we don't accidentally scar anybody for life. Hmm. Maybe we can use what's inside of a bacteria? I know that a lot of bacteria don't really have many complicated insights to begin with, but we might be able to make it a little funky. It's not a Pokemon, this is something out of Spore. I don't think Spore would allow this either. You know, there's some fucked up shit that goes on in their game, but I don't think I don't think like Maxis could create could allow their creation to be this. I mean I could I have been meaning to play Spore. I could make a stream of it while making this sick little bastard. Uh. You could. Yeah, but should I is the question. <laughs> hmm. Maybe like... Hmm. Okay, so maybe we can like almost have the wings kind of like connected to the body as so. God, this thing just gets worse and worse the more I try to build on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, little man. I'm sorry that I brought you into the world. You deserve a kinder life. A life where you could chitter happily and not be used, created for the purpose of clout. <laughs> Oh well, this thing's gonna live in my nightmares anyway, so I might as well make it pay rent. Let's see, what else we got in here? Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately it seems like the simplest organism in existence, the bacterium, doesn't particularly have anything exciting going on within it. Who'd have thought? Hmm. Hmm. Any like the legs kind of going out here? Oh wow, that is significantly worse. Yeah. <laughs> wow, no way, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so I've got... Hmm. I do kind of want to make it Pokemon-ish, is the thing. Like, I do feel like maybe... Maybe it would be best if I avoid trying to scar anybody on my Twitter timeline. I don't think, like... This is supposed to be my comeback, my comeback stream, so if I... <laughs> do accidentally end up, like, being like, thanks... Hey, everyone, thanks for coming to the stream! Here's, a, here's an abomination against the... Here's proof that the ability to think could have in no way been given to man by a kind by a generous higher being <laughs> all right so what what's kind of tying these guys together this thing i already forgot the name of this thing i know the butterfly is based off tigers and i know this thing is based off of salami so tiger salami put a little salami on that bad boy I don't know, maybe this thing's just really good at making sandwiches. I don't know its life. Alright, remember, big, nice round face parts. Yeah, we gotta think round shapes, we gotta think friendly, we gotta think huggable. Considering that it's covered in at least one type of mold, which may or may not be able to turn humans into salami. I'm not sure how good of an idea it would be to hug this thing, but I'll try to make it cute enough that you'll want to try at least. You know, it's it's like kind of like how you know that you shouldn't pet bears, but you know, they look so fuzzy and everything. Maybe I could do something like that for this guy. Hmm. 
Okay, so what we can do is maybe like... No, that looks like a skull. Uh, that's a veto. That's a veto on that one. All right. So how about we get rid of the middle things here? Fun fact: I've never made a fake on before. <laughs> I think I did one time when I tried to like. I, when my my friend like talk, I had a, a friend who was really into music at some point in high school, and he tried to like talk to me about these things called Phrygian chords that they were learning in music theory class. I had no idea. I was completely lost in that conversation, but I did think to myself, "Hey, you know, Phrygian actually sounds like a Pokemon name." I mean, I haven't been keeping up with Pokemon. It very well could be. I think after Chatot, they stopped making like sound-based Pokemon, though. God, I remember one dude made a theory about like how because of like the specific shapes of the legendaries for X and Y, it would have been based off of light and sound. And I was like, man, that's an awesome thought, but there is no way they're going to make it that cool. And I was right. They just put it in France. I've returned. Welcome back. We have made a creature. <laughs> Is the most generous term I can put for it, make for it. Okay. So, okay, I'm thinking of like Joltik, right? I'm thinking of Joltik uh, in terms of like Pokemon that are adorable and yet also bug themed. You know, most bug Pokemon are bug are adorable. So what? A, what if like? Okay, so maybe like this. All right, gotta give it like a nice, big, friendly pair of eyes. Hmm. Is this anything? I think so. I think I feel like that could be. I feel like that's on its way to being something. Although, I don't know if the eyes would kind of like go over that. They probably would, right? Yeah, they definitely would. <clears throat> Alright. So let me connect these guys here. And what a something it is! <laughs> indeed, indeed. Oh, cheers, I'll drink to that. <laughs> This here, put that there, erase that. Alright, I think the trick to making it look less threatening is to make sure that it can't you can't see both its pupils at once. like a third prong up here. I feel like that could be something. Yeah, I feel like that's something. All right, so what up? Okay, so again, kind of going back to the idea of like it being somewhat tiger themed. What about like giving it like big ol' antenna right here? Like a big ol' thing of antenna beginnings. Like that. And then... Just very little kind of like teeny weeny, teeny weeny follow up antenna. I feel like I need to make those a different shape, almost. 
Yeah, there we go. I feel like those, that's slightly better. And they'd have like the little kind of like tiger markings here. Again, Apex Predators just seem to have the most pettable ears for something that could delete a human's face with a single swipe of the claw. Let's see. Yeah, th I I'm grateful that I've never had to like meet a particularly large animal outside of zoos. Uh, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know which one of my instincts would take over, but I don't think any of them would kind of work out in that scenario. <laughs> yeah, I, I know there's like three responses to fear, right? There is flight, fight, flight, and freeze. And I feel like I am somewhere between fight and freeze. But I feel like if I try to, if, if I try to activate fight, that's just not going to go well. <laughs> I mean, it might actually, you know? I, I, from what I understand, like the best thing to do is to like make them believe that you are not worth being chased as prey, but not make them feel threatened. I might be thinking of sharks. Let's see. I don't know if that's sharks. I don't think you are supposed to do that for sharks either. Do not take wildlife survival advice from a from a man who cosplays rice. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't take don't take survival uh, survival wilderness advice from a dude who burnt who literally cooked his phone live on stream. <laughs> I mean, take it if you want, but I'm uh, but don't try to act on it. Yeah, giving it some round chubby cheeks helps a lot, I think. And what we might do here is we might actually just make the fangs just like downward. I call them fangs, they're like pincers or whatever, right? There we go. There, they're in the shape of a little heart. That's adorable. You know, this thing's growing on me, much like the mold that grows on its salami body. Mm. I gotta be careful with the shape of the of the thing, though. Uh, I don't want it to accidentally look like a peener. What about... Oh! Why not a pompadour? <laughs> I don't know how that relates to tigers or salami, but... You know, I think it'll work. <laughs> Five head. <laughs> Where do you work out the library to look an ass Pokemon? <laughs> All right. Hmm. Okay, we might we might be onto something here. Hang on. Okay. So then, I don't know why I made it so beefy, but I've but but trust the process. I know where I'm going with this. I 
I think. All right, you got this. Come on, you got this. There we go. I just had a horrible, awful thought. I wonder if there's anybody who's ever tried to like make creatures in Spore and then try to put them in another game like in Fallout New Vegas. I feel like they would actually fit pretty well in that game. As you know, like mutant creatures, but like the thought of that alone is a little bit disturbing. They were kind of... Spore was made a little bit later than New Vegas, I think. So I'm not sure how that would work. I don't know if it's like one-to-one -one translatable, but I know they've made like mods to give your companions like 4K foreheads or whatever. I already hate encountering New Vegas' creatures. <laughs> yeah. You never quite forget your fir the first time a Cazador just fucking gets your ass. <laughs> Wait, I got it. I know exactly how to how to turn the. Uh, okay, I think I got an idea. Yeah, haha, <laughs> stupid bug ass in the distance. Eat the eat. It, feel every piece of this varmint rifle. Oh shit, it's fast! And then and then you get game overed. <laughs> You've been poisoned. You've been poisoned. You've been poisoned. You've been poisoned. God. And the and it ma the worst and the what makes it worse that, uh, is that I tend to play unarmed character builds, <laughs> so I kind of have to get up close and personal to those little bug bastards. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> oh God, Boone, help me! <laughs> and meanwhile, Boone is just kind of like brooding in the corner, not even fucking using that sniper rifle that I got for him. <laughs> Alright. Watch this. This is how we turn this, this around. Now, I don't know if salamis come in links. But if they but if they don't, then it'll still look kind of like sausage-ish. There we go. Yeah, I think like maybe grocery store salami comes in links. I don't know if the, I think like each sal, I think like outside of the grocery store salami is like serious business that has to be like pro aged properly and with care, almost like cheese, really. And then at the end of the long link arms, just a little tiny peats. I'm not a butcher or a deli worker, so I could not tell you. Hmm, hmm. Man, we need to bring back having like a local local butcher. Fucking fifty, if like twenty dollars a gram for. No, it's not twenty dollars a gram, but it's like definitely more expensive to get to get meat nowadays to be fair i don't live in a in like a farming community that raises meat i imagine it's cheaper out where there's more cows like in texas i should drink some water there we go <laughs> okay Oop. pop your pop the wrists there we go <laughs> the, th the idea of this dude just having like these tiny little hands at the end of it is actually really tickling me. I don't know. Somehow this feels like it's a step backward and a step forward in the design. Does that make sense? I feel like I've gone in a different direction than I was originally intending to, but hey, that's half the fun of the journey is getting to the, uh, to the destination. I really like it. Hey, thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> the 
This is making me laugh way more than it should. <laughs> okay. So then, what about... Okay, so kind of like rounding out the idea of like a bacterium body. The flagellum would be kind of obscured by everything going on up here, so why not? Alright, first of all... Let's see... Thinking back on it though, that thing that I was doing with Wikipedia is a dangerous game of roulette. Like, like, what? What if I got like a an article about like, I don't know, so, something something that's like immediately TOS bannable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What if I got a, What if I got a, the article on how to make car bombs or some shit? I don't know what's on Wikipedia sometimes. <laughs> God, just some dude on Twitter. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah, no. I think I do need to like go to go to like some maybe some kind of like specific creature Wikipedia to make to make sure that I don't. Well, I don't know if it has its own safe search built on or what. I don't think that counts when you're just clicking on random articles like I did. Hmm. Well, I'll figure it out one way or another. In any case, I can count on the old on the old luck of the rice to carry me through the day. Yeah, I, I don't talk about it too much, but I do consider myself to be an absurd like in terms of like RPG skill sets, I do consider myself to be absurdly lucky. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm confident that it, it, even if I got something bad, it'll turn out to, to be something good in the end. Maybe that's just optimism, though. <laughs> I don't think that's so much luck as it is just blind optimism. <laughs> it could be both. I mean, it could be both. Easily. <laughs> I do feel like luck is almost something that you can cultivate, though. Like, if you think of luck in terms of, like, manipulating probability and, every and such, you can, you can actually definitely sack the deck in your favor in very subtle ways. Not something like super obvious, but definitely like if you're very present minded, I definitely think that you can kind of increase the chances of something favorable to you happening. But I think that's just being, you know, aware. You don't notice opportunity. You can't like take advantage of advantage of opportunities unless you actually notice them first. What a polite young fellow, honestly. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, what if I gave him a little chef's hat? Like, what if, what if I made this a little butcher's hat? Do butchers have, like, specific hats? I gotta look that up. I think they look like little, like... Huh. Yeah, like one of these things. Look at him, how could he hate a face like this? My little man. I'm getting weirdly attached to this little guy, I like it. <laughs> hmm. What about like, a, a sausage ribbon down here? No, that's that's a little much, I think. Wait, maybe that's where the flagellum could be. Nah. Nah, I I feel like if I put anything there other than like maybe a pattern or something, it's gonna be a little too busy. Better leave it as is for now.
All right. In the meantime, though, we can't start get started on these wings right here. So what I think I might do is I might actually start them around here. And then go like this. I do know that there is a species... No, wait, hang on. I'm definitely, like... <laughs> I was gonna go, I think there is a species of butterfly that like feeds on blood or something, but that is 100% absolutely some shit I read in Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> That's not a real thing. That's a thing from Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> False alarm, folks. I mean, there might be carnivorous butterflies. You never know what those little flappy bastards are up to. You don't know what's going on inside, inside the mind of a killer. <laughs> Anime brain rot. I didn't even like Hunter x Hunter that much. <laughs> I got. It, I found it really difficult to. I found it really hard to keep up with like the Nen powers up up until the later stages. Like they 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 like throw this long winded explanation at you, like in the Battle Tower saga. Like oh yeah, this is Ren. This is Ten. This is like fucking Hatsu. This is all this shit. And I'm like I can't even keep up with any of this. <laughs> My brother in Christ. I am reading this so I don't have to think. <laughs> What if I gave him a little apron? Wait, hang on. What if I gave him a little wing apron? Yes. Butcher bug. Yeah, I don't think this is a Pokemon anymore, but this is certainly a character. <laughs> <laughs> he just like wears a fake the poor little guy just wears a fake mustache or something to blend in with human society <laughs> like he's just got like a fake mustache up here and it's just like hi my name is Hugh Man <laughs> I am approximately third and he goes like I and like the dude running the butcher chop is just like shrugging it's just like nodding his head and shaking his long tender little hand here and goes like good to meet you Hugh uh how old are you and he was just like oh I'm 17 and he's just like looking at the but at the oh, store owner's reaction and he's just like the store owner kind of like quirks his eyebrow a little bit like hmm and he and, and the little gut butcher bug just goes like 70 I said I'm 70 years old <laughs> and <laughs> Like, you know, he's trying to compensate a little too hard in one way or the other. <laughs> I am deeply enamored with this creature. If that's the, if, if we're no longer going the Pokemon route, though, I do want to give this guy, like, some little peats down here. I love calling, like, animal paws Pete's. It just feels right. <laughs> this is definitely a rejected character from fucking Men in Black is what it is. <laughs> yeah, he, he was just too adorable to make it into the final cut of the movie, unfortunately. He, he kind of stole the show as the thing, you know? Like, they, they got Will Smith, they got that other dude who I don't remember the name of signed on. It was going to be like a whole thing, and then this dude just kept stealing every single scene he was in. It was impossible to work with. You know, it's, it's difficult for a bug to make it far in Hollywood. All right. You know, he he went to, he went to that city with dreams in his head and the stars in his heart, but it just he just couldn't cut it in the end. Poor guy. Okay, and maybe you give him a bit, big old booty as well. Oh, that might be interesting to like have a little leg through each of these holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
I remember I went to see the like the third Men in Black movie with my cousin in Spanish. I just did not understand what the hell was going on the whole time. Like there was time travel involved, there was like some dude who looked nasty as hell. It was all it was all kind of freaky. Then again, it, it might have just been that my grasp on Spanish wasn't too too strong, and I just missed a lot of the context because I because of the language barrier. It, it's a mystery, honestly. I don't remember a lot of any movie, to be perfectly honest. Oh, <laughs> what a little charmer. I like this dude. I like the cut of this bug's jib. <laughs> Although it does bug me that, pun intended, it does bug me that one hand is higher than the other when it shouldn't be. Hang on. I, I can fix that. Alright. <laughs> Let's uh, do some flat coloring for this bad boy and we can call it a night. It is getting to be around that hour. Alright, so what we're gonna want to do is I think gonna vanish the first bug picture. Move this one kind of like here where it can't uh, interrupt anything. Okay, so here's my kind of strategy for this. Alright, first of all we obviously gotta have the little white hat. As any butcher should. I think I'm gonna do the eyes maybe last. The bow tie is what really does it for me, I think. The bow tie has to be like a bright red, I think. The rest of the body can be like types of yellows, I think. We can kind of bring the, co in the color cohesion up in a minute. Oops. Wait, no, okay, so because it's like a salami body, right? Like, we got a little salami noodle arms. Okay, so I think I'm the second color would be this. This is such a strange creature. I love them, though. Okay, probably like a white apron as well. And a white... Uh, I'm not sure what this thing is, honestly. It's just kind of like a weird bug fashion accessory. Hmm. Let's play around with the colors a little bit. Because I'm not super in love with this whole combination just yet. Ooh, wait, hang on. A little bit more. Okay, now purple and orange. Now that's getting somewhere. down here. Maybe a white bow tie as well. No, no, they needed like that little extra pl splash of color, I think. May not quite that bright, though. Brighter than that. Warmer. Warmer. 
Mm -mm -mm. Cold, cold, cold. Okay, maybe that can be the color of the eyes as well. Okay, and then we can just erase that line right there. Hmm. Like I said, I like it, but there's not so, it's not very exciting. So what I might do is I might uh, do my old color, my uh, old gradient mapping trick to figure out something more interesting that I can do with the colors. Okay, now that's interesting. What's that going to look like with the kind of a color palette here? Hmm. Interesting that it, it looks a little bit more pastel. Oh, this kind of contrast is a little better. Maybe like orange and purple. All right. Let's try another tone. See what we can do with that. Ooh, okay. What about this one? Hmm. I'm I'm kinda digging this pink color palette, but that's not what I'm gonna go for, I don't think. All right, let's try a couple more and, and uh, then we can see what else we can do with this guy. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, divide is an interesting kind of shift. Ooh. All right, I think we got a winner for this one. I think I think all that's missing now is to incorporate a little bit extra of what was in the original kind of yellows. So I'm going to hmm, merge this one down like this. And then I am going to add a, a few bright yellows to this kind of cloth here. Hey, butter. All right. Now, the issue is that, like, with this apron, right, it's going to kind of show... It's not going to show so well. So where I might do it, actually, is on the back part here. And then over here. Come on. Here we go. There we go. Look at my little guy. Yeah, the original kind of intent of salami is a little bit gone, but I feel like I like this color palette. We can also like just kind of try and make it match the original kind of hues as well to make it to make the kind of darker parts redder but uh that might be a little bit heavy-handed in terms of like the action okay so that's kind of approaching red brown okay so that means we went too far with brown oh that is yeah i think i'm gonna stick with this one actually <laughs> you know in retrospect it might not be good to be too adventurous. Okay, well, I'm satisfied with that. Um, let's go find somebody to raid. <laughs> yeah, I like this little guy. He's been... he's a little darling dude. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So... Let me get back to just chatting. Ah, where am I? Help! Help! I'm stuck under the desk! <laughs> what do I teleport? Ah, there we go. 
Um, yeah, whenever I teleport back to my back to my uh, desk, it uh, ends, it ends up doing this a little bit. Rate a bug, perhaps? Hmm. Um, actually, my buddy Harvey is rating right now. So, not rating. He's streaming. My buddy Harvey is streaming. So I want to say hi to him. It's been a it's it's been a minute since I talked with Harvey. Since I've been to one of his streams. Um, all right. So planning, planning, planning. Where is my schedule for this week? Okay, so I think tomorrow I am not doing anything. But on Wednesday, I am doing another another OC design, actually, funnily enough. Um, I think that one's going to be another one of those where I turn a shoe into a person. But after that, it's a couple of days break, and then a just chatting stream on Saturday. So, uh, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week. I know it's just the beginning. Hang in there. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely week, and I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye.